What's up guys? It's Daz here. But you don't really care. So we're gonna try and get through this as fast as we can because not only are we a little bit behind, but... Wait, no, that was the only top point I wanted to make. We're a little bit behind. We wanted to do three galaxies a day and yesterday we did two. Oh no, it's a prankster comet. We gotta run through Honey Blooms. Yeah, honey Bloom, not Honey Blooms. Honey Bloom Galaxy. You know what this galaxy's making me think of? Everyone's bees, and Luigi's soon enough gonna be dressed like a bee. And that makes me think of cosplayers. And you know what cosplaying reminds me of? Comic-Con. Yes, cos... cosmic comic con play. cosmic con play. Cos... cos play con Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna stop right there and try not to continue that line of discussion anymore, but let's continue talking about Comic-Con, because while well, yes, there is all sort of Comic-Con and MAGFest and E3 and all that fun stuff in America, there's also, at least I hope there is, a, actually I'm not sure if there's a MAGFest, but there is a Comic-Con in London, and with me going to university at the moment, for those of you that don't know, like where I am at at the moment with my mum's place, we're out in the countryside a little bit more, so the fact that I'm going to be moving off to university means I'll be closer to London, and I might be able to go to the London Comic Cons and any other sort of conventions that are going on at the time, so I'm a little excited about that, like, you know, not only am I moving off to a new place to live with people my age and going to university and learning stuff, but then we're also going to be possibly going to conventions, and if that's the case, if there's anyone, any of the fans of mine that are in London, I might be able to meet some of you briefly. Be interesting, or at least, or even better, I guess, alternatively, I'll be able to meet some people that I'd want to meet. Like, you know, I'm still, I may make YouTube videos, but I'm still a fan of others, in case you can tell by how many, how they mentioned those couple of other LPs at the time. There's the green star, I could hear you tinkling along, right at the top. But yeah, I'll be going to Comic-Con, or I probably will be able to in the future, which is exciting to me. Because I've always seen it, and it looks so amazing, like fascinating, I mean, you can go to just see all these different kinds of people, it's like a massive community all coming together, and I'll be able to join them. Hopefully by that point I'll be able to like have my own costume. Hmm, that's interesting. Also, we're at 1993, huh? It must have been a good year. I wouldn't know, I was minus three. But, we only have two stars in this galaxy and two stars in the next. So maybe we'll even get to four galaxies today. That's very wishful thinking, but we'll see what we can do. It's also helpful because I know exactly where this second star is. So let's go to it. So here's my question to you. For those of you that have gone to any sort of these conventions like MAGFest, Comic-Con, E3, whatever it is, what experience do you what experiences do you have of it? Do you have really I can't speak. What experiences do you have of it? Do you have any sort of stories to tell? Good Ho hopefully they're good stories, you know, not like disturbing stories of the time you were uh I, I can't even think of any sort of thing, I don't know. The time you were snuck off upon by a guy dressing up as Slender Man and you 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 screamed and everyone looked at you funny. It, there you go. That's that's a horrible story that I want no one to ever experience. But I expect someone else probably has. Because if I dressed up as Slender Man, I probably would try and scare people too, or I would try to make people laugh to completely break the character. But you know, yeah. Tell me stories of Comic Con because I've never been to any. I've only ever seen people vlog about it really. So be interesting to see. You know. No, uh, I. That's also, I guess, that's a thing I guess I'll add to my bucket list. I'd love to be able to go to, like, an American, at least. I'd want to go to a convention as well, but I'd love to go to, like, a proper big American convention that's really massive and loads of people go to it. And just, you know, because that's where majority, the majority of, like, internet people are. They're all in America, and, like, I assume the game companies go to the American ones. They might go to the English ones as well, but I'm doubtful somewhat. So, you know, I'd like to go to that. I'll add that to a bucket list of mine. Yeah. Else? I'm trying to think what else I'd have on a bucket list, because I don't have a bucket list at the moment. Also, I love the way I say bucket list, really emphasising the bah in bucket list. No, it's not pronounced bouquet. But yeah, I'm trying to think what else would I, what else do I want to do in my life? Play video games, make films, problem solved. 
Now, there, pro there probably is more, but I'm too busy thinking about where exactly the green star is that I can't actually think about it. Actually, you can hear the green star tinkling right about now. Uh, it's right up there. I Actually, let me go this way. It might be safer. Uh, so up here, we have a little secret crystal, crystal stars. No, star bits. And let's see. Up here a bit. A bit more. There we go. See? Right up here. Expect Mario and Luigi are overdone and things like cosplaying stuff. What would be good? I don't wonder. Hmm. Superheroes are taken. No Superman or Batmans. Deadpool's are very overdone, but they still entertain me. Um, I don't know. I guess <laughs> I could always try and dress up as Olimar. Just shave all my hair off except for three tufts. Put on a helmet. Grab a massive paper mache nose, and then find a bunch of people to be my Pikmin. I could hire them, run around with like a fake whistle that's hopefully not too loud to draw too much attention and then try and hire people as my Pikmin group. There you go, that's an idea for comic. That sounds really embarrassing, but oh well. Uh, hmm, I wonder. Oh, wishful thinking about Comic-Con is all I'm doing. Anyway, back to the Bowser level with the dramatic classic song from the 64 game. I guess 64 games because there are multiple ones. Right, give me your launch star or your pull star, that works too. Wow! That's not singing, that's just imitating the sound effects of the pull star. Although I am allowed to sing too, so I can do that if I want to. But I'm, I'm a little pooped out of singing. I don't know why, I just don't feel like it. Not in a bad mood or anything, just don't want to sing. Okay, I almost sung there because... I don't know. I'm not even in the mood to sing. I'm in the mood to talk and relax and mellow out, actually. Makes makes no sense. That's not the kind of person I am, except that's exactly the kind of person I am. In real life, people generally... Whoa! Generally, people think of, like, they generally see me as quite mellow and laid back, because... I don't know why. I, I think the main thing is, I don't talk. I'm always smiling, and I just listen to people, and I'm always in a good mood. That's what it is, so I just sound really mellow and nice. And I've had people, I don't think I've said this before, but I've had like people in real life who've like seen my videos and they say, Wow, Daryl, you, you, you talk more in like one video than I've ever heard you speak in a month. And I think, yeah, that's kind of funny. But yeah, I'm a lot more mellow and quiet. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's a shyness thing and it's not like I'm faking my energetic personality here. It's just, I have nothing to be energetic about in real life, really. Video games and film are my passion, and very few people know about the. Well, very few, very, very few people see my video game version of me, which is this me, where I'm talkative and I know loads of stuff. And then only a handful of people see me when I'm passionately talking about films, because they're into films themselves and we're making stuff together, and that's the only time they ever see it. So, oh well. It's interesting, though, how different I become. Even though I'm not, like, it's still me, it's just a less suppressed me. How many other YouTubers are like that, if they're massively different on screen and on camera? Hopefully that's still a good thing. It's not like they're horrible people in real life. I hope not. That would be... Oh, that'd be disappointing. Anyway, I don't quite remember where the second green star is. Also, that first green star! What a horrible placement, right? Seriously, the only way you can tell is because it's spark- like, you can't even see the star, you see the twinkling behind the rock, even though I was not thinking about it and I did see it, so maybe it was kind of obvious, but still, that's like one of the harsher places they could have put it, and we'll see much harsher in the future. What? Oh, well, I got a life, and I- oh, I didn't even take damage. Well done, me. I think I remember where the second one is. It might be in this one, or it might be another level that has a similar- I'm not sure. There is one green star in the Bowser level that's got really, really mean placements where like, if you didn't know where it was, you're probably not going to find out where it was because you're not looking in the right place. And it's really, it's well hidden, but it's harshly hidden. And I, I'm hoping it's today, or I hope it's today. I hope it's this one because I just want to show it off. Otherwise, I'm going to make it really suspenseful for another time. We'll see, and that's not good. Making suspense is obviously not good. 
never put that in a story. Tension. Suspense. Same thing. Whoops. I don't know why I... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Enough of your tinkling. I've already gotten you, Green Star. I can walk between your feet. And let's go break down this one gate. Gate. Uh, again, it just can't take Luigi. Come on. Thank you. And again with the very awkward camera angle. No, that was not a full camera. There it is. The very annoyingly, well, a bad, a well-placed, but also horribly placed green star. Below the Matamouse. Yeah. I like it, but I also hate it. But actually, the only reason I know where that was is because I saw it. It was one of the few Super Mario Galaxy 2 Green Star Galaxy videos that I watched from Nintendo Caprisa. Because uh, I watched, I, wa I remember um, I wanted to watch his LP of Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the longest time, but I never did because I was like, well, I kind of want to play that game and I don't want to spoil it. So then I played it in my practice file and then sort of... As I got later into it, I started watching the earlier stuff, and we still have time to do another galaxy, so that's good. But, yeah, and so, and then I ended up accidentally watch. well, not accidentally. No, it was accidentally, because I had it on, I was watching the playlist on autoplay and shuffle. So it just automatically came to one Green Star Galaxy, and I was watching it, and I was like, eh, ah, one galaxy won't hurt, and then I found out the location of those two, which are probably the two hardest ones, like, well, two of the hardest ones. One's behind a tiny little boulder off to the side, and one's underneath the ground, so, I don't know. Anyway, welcome to Tall Trunk Galaxy with a Yoshi, and we have a green star to find somewhere, but I can't hear it tinkling. Tingling? Tinkling. Tinkling is peeing, so I probably shouldn't say that, it's tingling. But, no, that's a feeling. Oh, I don't know. Twinkling! That's what I'm thinking of! It's twinkling! I think... I think it's... Is it twinkling? I hope it's twinkling. There's the... There's the star. Right. Uh, get the live stream. Can we get... Can we get a cutscene with Yoshi? Nope. <laughs> well, alrighty then. Also, World 3 is so pretty. And again with the or <laughs> That awkward... Is it always like... Is it like the first galaxy of every world or something? I don't think it is, but it... Uh, it's so out of place. Where I'm like, yeah, let's go! And then Luigi's there like, huh? Oh, right, yeah. I forgot I don't have to say goodbye or anything. It's awkward and weird. But I kind of like it. Hmm. Oh, they're going to put green stars on the actual slide, aren't they? Oh. So here's something I've been rattling my brain about for a, actually it's been a couple of years really, but you know it's not a big thing, and that is live streaming. I would love to at some point in the future. Probably it probably won't be like this year. Probably maybe like next year or something. Like when I've got my own little um, house apartment with roommates that I'm good friends with and nice and comfortable with, and not just a bunch of strangers in a university small apartment dorm thing. But um, I'd love to do live streaming in the future. Just playing games live, or doing, maybe not even, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably will be playing games. I mean, what else is there to do in live streaming, really? But it's something I'd love to do in the future, and I would love to, like, I guess I'll add that to my bucket list as well. <coughs> I really want to do, ah, I can't talk, my throat's going all dry. <coughs> I'd really like to do a charity live stream at some point. I don't know what the charity would be, but I'd really just want to be able to, like, I want to do more charitable stuff, but... The way, like, my financial situation is at the moment with, like, my family, we can never afford, we would, you know, we could never be able to really handle doing charity work as well as actually sustaining ourselves. And I feel like while, it, you know, it's more of a sacrifice to give to charity when you don't have money yourself, I feel like it's more about, it's not so much about how much of my money I give, it's about how much money is given. Like, it's great and all that I've, like, say in, in some hypothetical situation, I gave away, say I had a hundred pounds, okay, a hundred dollars, and I gave away ninety-five dollars, and I have to live off of five dollars for like a week now. It's great and all that I made a massive sacrifice, but then if someone had a million dollars, and they gave away one thousand dollars, that's only, what, one percent? Uh, you know, it's such a tiny fraction, 
and it should be, you know, it would be nothing to them. That, to me, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much in percentage you donated. It's not about you. It's about how much money has been donated. The guy who donated a thousand dollars did better than the guy who donated 95 because it's not about how much you sacrifice, it's about how much they get. And that's, you know, so in that sense, it's why I, you know, while I could give to charity with the little money I have, I feel it's better for me to save up my money to hopefully get more successful. So then when I'm in the, like, in the future, I'll have more money around to give more money to charity in the future, which is, if that makes sense. And that's kind of what I want to do. Of course, that's when I have more money, and I'll do it myself, but in the meantime, while I don't have a massive financial security thing going on, plus I've got to worry about university debts as well, soon enough, 42 grand, good for me, then um, what I'd like to do is be able to do a live stream, like charity live streams, where I'll be donating a little bit, like little bits, you know, not ton, like not a massive sacrifice, but then donating alongside other people who like, I don't know, all, ki all kinds of different charities, just Maybe like make it a monthly thing, you know, where just do just doing good things to make things actually seem like you're making a difference in the world, which is something I really sort of want to get into doing. Make a difference in the world. Seems like a good idea to me, generally. But yeah, now I still haven't seen this green star. But yeah, I'd like to do live streams in the future. My main problem with not doing them right now is because while I do have a pretty decent following, there's two main problems with it. One, I don't think it would be big enough to make any sort of massive impact livestream wise. Like, I doubt, I'd probably only get like 10 views at the time because, well, there's not very many of you. Plus, my time zone's not very good for America. There's the green star, it's to the left of the path. I remembered it in the last minute there. But yeah, my time zones would make it so that most people would be asleep anyway, or I would be. If I did do live streaming, I'd probably have to do it either really early in the morning or really late at night for it to actually be successful. Hmm. But yeah, I would love to do live streaming in the future. Don't know exactly what I'd do. If I actually know, I did have an idea, actually. I I brought it up in my Wind Waker HD Let's Play, but then I forgot about it when I did the post commentary thing. The idea was that I wanted to oh we Ah uh, we'll have time to do a couple other No, nope, not that one. I have time to do a couple other stars. We'll get into our fourth galaxy today then. Hooray, we actually made it. Just might not complete it. But anyway, um, Train of thought's gone again. Oh yeah, one idea I wanted to do for a live stream, not necessarily a charity live stream, but just a live stream in general, would be to, am I talking too fast? I feel like, I guess it's because I'm excited. But uh, the idea would be, if there was anything left over to do in an LP, like a big challenge, a big like completing thing that I hadn't done, I could do it in a live stream in a more mellow environment where it's just a more personal interaction with the audience because you'll be live watching and I'll be able to see you talk as it goes on and then just like a long it would just be like a long term challenge thing or I could play completely different games like in total like in general as a live stream like maybe short games that can be done in a single session a single few hour session or something I don't know it was just an interesting thought like because for win for my Wind Waker LP I said for some stupid reason that I wanted to do all of the little, I wanted to do all the portraits. I wanted to take a picture of every character and make them the little uh, portrait trophy things. Don't know why I said I'd do that. It was a horrible idea, but if I did want to do it, I could do it in a live stream, perhaps in a sort of calm situation, like make it a question and answers thing, where I just sort of talk with the people and then get prepared to do stuff for an LP. I don't know, just an idea. I mean, I might not ever get round to doing the portrait thing. We'll never really know, but. I don't know, it's just, it's just an idea, a sort of like an extra thing to do with live streaming. I don't know. And charity live streaming. I like that idea a lot. But anyway, that is going to be our last star for today. After all, we've just come up on the 20 minute mark. I don't know if I have to cut anything else out today, but there you go. 160. And for now, Maris Vintaz. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Jesus, that's really harsh. Like, that's out of the way. You can barely see, like, a shine off the side of the screen, and the camera angle doesn't change. You can't choose... Ugh. Oh, didn't like that one. <laughs> I see you. 
Not you. I know. Get out of my way. I'm talking about this guy. How do they want us to get that? Do they just want us... Uh, aim. There. Ouch. That's harsh. Harsh way to go. Oh. Wow. Okay. That is harsh. And I missed. Uh, really? I missed again? Is my depth perception just really crappy? Oh, there it is. What? How? Okay, I'll do it, but first, let me get these. Okay. Huh. Uh. Huh. Oh, this is easy. 